Hey guys, and welcome to episode 37 of Europe in Detail. In this episode, we're going to expand our little Greek style town here down this cliffside, and this is going to include some pretty crazy building methods. And to begin with, looking at this on Google Earth, it was really overwhelming. And to be able to build this in city skylines, I think the first thing I needed to do was establish some sort of reference point, something that I could put in and sort of base everything off. And the only thing I could think of was the pedestrian paths. So what makes this area more complicated is there is no structure to this whatsoever. There's no roads, there's no formality to the way the paths are laid out, there's no specific levels. It's basically just this path leads there and that's good enough. And I kind of figured with that in mind, the pedestrian path should be the first thing I'd put down and I'm really trying to put this down in the most erratic pattern I can think of. The next step is going to be to put the buildings in so that this path can give access to those buildings. And I suppose the only two rules I'm following here are make sure there's enough room around these paths for buildings so don't get them too close together and make sure they're not steep enough that people can't walk up and down them. And at this point, I was pretty sure it was going to work. I was trusting my method, but looking at the way the pedestrian path is here, you know, this is pretty crazy, really. There was definitely a part of me at this point that was doubting whether this was going to work at all, but I guess I had to keep going. I didn't have any alternative. I do end up moving these paths a little wee bit, but basically what you see here is what you get. This is what we're going to work with. Now the fun part, putting these buildings in. I want to keep as many of these buildings original as I can, so not turn them to procedural objects. This means that they're going to run normally, require services, we're going to have people use our pedestrian paths to get to and from these buildings. And I'm using the building spawn points mod to change their surface point to a road up on a flatter area of the town so that we don't have trucks trying to come down these pedestrian paths. This really only works because the game is coded so that citizens or pedestrians will use the paths and come down to the building but the services that the building may require so if people die in the building and a hearse needs to turn up or there's a fire they will go to wherever i set the spawn points mod actually with that in mind a mod that changes where pedestrians enter a building would be really really handy as well i guess but that is far beyond my scope so i'll leave that to somebody with more knowledge Before I put any more of these buildings down and expand this area anymore, I want to come back and start detailing in between these buildings and just find out whether this method is actually going to work properly before I commit to the whole area. It's fair to say that the buildings here only represent probably half of the overall look. The rest of the area is sort of all these big plastered white walls and different forms of retaining walls that make this area look very unique. I guess the overall look I'm going here for is like a fluid look from building to building to make them look like they're sort of flowing with the cliffside and sort of flowing together. While I was building this, I was wondering whether it was all the earthquakes and seismic activity in the area that sort of forced them to build like this. Let's say half of the buildings were damaged in a really bad earthquake and the other half weren't. Well, you could kind of imagine how a city or a town along a cliffside would end up looking like this because not only are they having to rebuild but they're also retaining the whole cliffside here from slipping away so I guess they've sort of plastered or rendered these buildings together to create buildings and dwellings to live in as well as retaining that cliffside and that's about as far away from normal or current building methods as you could possibly get, but look at the beauty that it creates, you know. It's kind of like the more laws and regulations we put on building, the more beauty we suck out of it. Not to mention having to wait 20 years before even putting a shovel in the ground for engineers to assess everything. These guys have literally just scooped up some lime, mixed it with some water and plastered these buildings. And I had a really awesome comment from somebody who knows Greece more than I do, who also explained why there's blue paint everywhere. It's because there is a plant that's readily available in the area, and 
I cannot remember its name for the life of me, but mixed up with water, it creates this, yeah, really sort of blue or bright, vibrant blue colour. So the whole area is about natural materials, and I believe that's what's created this beauty, as well as obviously the expression of human emotion here in building. And maybe they, the original builders, didn't consciously mean to make it look beautiful, but maybe that's also the reason it really is. So anyway, let's talk about what I'm doing here. You can see I'm just working basically with what we already had. So working with the paths, for instance, I'm covering them with a specific type of asphalt that I used in the last episode where it's sort of flattish and where the path gets a bit more steep, we put stairs in. So that's all pretty 101. And the other big thing you're going to notice is those big plastered walls everywhere. And again, I'm basically following the contours of what we've built up to this point. I'm running them pretty much everywhere that I need them before I start running them everywhere else. So we see a lot of them going up the sides of stairs creating handrails. We also see a lot of them going along the edge of most of the paths. And there's also a couple of little restaurants and hidden away shops that are behind these fences just a little wee bit with little gates that you can go through and enter the shops in. There was also a couple of areas between the pedestrian paths where there was a lot of room still so I introduced a couple of PO buildings and then put like a surface network on top of them to create a flat level. So after I'd moved all the spawn points back up to the road, the areas started to work properly and it was really awesome to see people coming down and using these paths. Admittedly, a lot of them are clipping, I couldn't get them perfect. I'd rather they clipped a little bit through the ground than walked in mid-air, but just having the citizens walking through these little wee narrow alleys really brings this area to life and... I must have sat here for a good 5 or 10 minutes just watching. So the next thing I want to move on to is basically putting down more buildings, but these buildings are going to require a little bit of work with PO. They fit together very, very neatly. And I guess one thing I do have in my favour is that we're moving up to a flatter part of the town here. So for whatever reason, it was at this point here that I sort of started to look at how the city was running. And when I turned off a few different mods, I realised that it was basically running really crap. I had like 50 people in jail and 700 odd people were sick. I didn't have enough schools and I just thought, man, I've got, I've got to address this. This is not good enough. Here I am creating this beautiful place for these people to live in and they're dying drinking their own poo water. So, you know, I've got to do the right thing. And while I was doing this, I also found out that my Rico settings had like 150 houses per little residential cube that I put in, which was just overflowing my services that I'd put in the city. So after putting the brakes on here and going back to the basics and getting all of this right, the city just ran so much better. There was more people in and they were a lot happier. So I think my methods worked, I'm really happy with how this looks and at this point I'm more than happy to carry on and detail this properly. So I'm going to try and make the areas look a bit more used and a bit more grungy. We're going to see a lot of these sort of imperfections around these high traffic areas and for now I'm going to have to put everything down by hand as you can see but I've got someone working on some wicked assets that can hopefully help me in this department. So apart from these little imperfections that we're adding, 
this is where I want to start putting in things like little restaurants and cafes and I want to put these in highly visual areas if I can because they sort of make the area look really inviting if you can see a seated area or whatever you can imagine yourself sitting down there and this is also keeping in true with what we see on Google Earth. A lot of these restaurants are on top of buildings that are below them, which of course gives a really good view of the coast. And as fun as it's been to put all of these buildings and stuff in up to this point, I have to admit that putting in these little details, for me, is always the funnest part. The little tables, the little planters, things like doors to give access from certain levels, different decals on the ground and things like shade covers this is where everything sort of comes together and it's also where I'm really pleased that we put those pedestrian paths down to begin with because we've got people moving all around these little wee narrow stairways and through these alleyways now which really makes all this area worthwhile. There's a heap of pools and spas in this area as well. They're almost impossible to miss on Google Earth. They look super inviting as well. They've got this beautiful blue turquoise water in them. It looks as though some of them may be sort of more private and some of them are more maybe hotels or motels. But we're definitely putting some of those in here. And this particular one here is actually one of the vanilla ones. And I'm using this because the colour of the water is absolutely bang on to what we see in real life. It's also got this like white marble decal around the edge of it as default which goes perfect with what we're using it for here. And the second little pull that we put in here down on the lower level is one that I got off the workshop. I didn't want to use the same style pull everywhere. So I also want to introduce some like really unique shops as well. So I found this bunch of props on the workshop that look like rugs like being sold at a market or whatever. And I thought these would be perfect to make a little shop out of. So maybe these rugs are like handmade in the area or whatever. And with the rest of the sort of immediate area, I just put in some like little random market props. Like maybe they're selling fruit and stuff down in here. And just generally try and make the area look interesting.
So while I was looking on Google Earth, I noticed that a lot of these houses and buildings have these round plastered roofs on them. And it was enough for me to want to investigate and find out exactly why. And it turns out they pretty much just collect their own rainwater. So these roofs are designed so that they run into little gutters and that gutter actually feeds inside these houses. So they use only rainwater as far as I can tell, which would make sense because putting in water pipes down here to plumb into some sort of town system would be impossible. Then I want to carry on detailing this area that we've built until it's all finished. So I'm really stoked with how it's come out, but it's also going to be a very daunting process building an entire town like this. But nevertheless, it's a joy to build and I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. If you guys could give it a thumbs up, that'd be choice. And look after yourselves guys, and I hope to see you on the next episode. See you later.